Uh, welcome, folks. I am passionate about learning and education. I came from a relative humble but happy family background, and education has allowed me to establish a career that's fed my family, allowed me to travel the world, put me in touch with some amazing people as well. I've learned lessons about subjects as far and wide as business and executive coaching, digital transformation and management. So when I heard about the School of Automation, who teach people of all ages about robotic process automation and intelligent automation and other digital skills, I could not pass up the opportunity to reach out to get an interview to learn some more about their work and how they help students develop careers in digital tech. Mark Cooper is the Chief Executive of the School of Automation and Mark is with us today. Mark, would you mind introducing yourself, sir? Tell us a little bit more about you and a little bit more about the work that the school do. Yeah, um, I get, firstly, thank you very much, Kieran. I appreciate the time and being asked to come and speak to you. Um, always passionate about this subject so you know delighted to get a chat with you about what we're doing at the school so I'm Mark Cooper I'm the CEO at the school I, I, I lead the school and, and as you said the school of automation is we're on a we're on a journey and what we do is we train students and learners as you say of all ages to have a career in intelligent automation in this automation space um you know, my background for the last, you know, over 10 years now is all about people, skills, training, um, qualifications, entering into the job market, right? So that's been my passion and background. So I share what you'd said at the start there about an opportunity to speak about this is like, yes, uh, you know, I, I'm in, I, I, this is where my passion lies. So, you know, when the school was founded back in 20, 2020, actually, um, an opportunity for myself to come and lead here um, and help people have careers in this space, right? Because we're looking about the world of work. How is it changing? How is technology changing how businesses work and um, the skills people need to enter jobs in this space? So for me, it was, you know, I, it was a no-brainer for me to come and be part of this. How can, how can we put a model in place that helps people that need help, right? So there's lots of people out there of all ages and backgrounds and taking different career paths and where they are and they need help and support. Sometimes we we hear the word digital transformation and we hear there's jobs as developers and architects and tech leads and there's an array of different jobs. Sometimes it can drive fear in people. Um, and how do you make them feel part of that, right? It's because one, businesses need people. Um, but how do we link it? How do we how do we go about that in a way that it, it includes people? We're inclusive. Um, the business and technology is driving that way, but how do we bring people along at the back of that to make sure that they're, they're, they're fitting in? They have the the environment and the support to to join this. Um, and I think that's what we're doing at the school, right? So we've got. We've got several models. We've got Glasgow in Scotland and hopefully wider UK. And we've got a model in Ireland working with the Education Training Board. So, you know, we've been on a journey at the school for, we're coming up for three years now. Um, so I've got, I've got loads of stories to tell about what we've been doing in the last, you know, three years. Um, but that's, you know, that's a lot about me, my passion, the school, what are we trying to do and what we're trying to create. Well, it's, it's those stories I, yeah. I want to dig into, Mark, because you're right. Uh, everybody talks about digital transformation. They talk about all these skills that we'll need, yeah. not just to compete in the modern global economy, but to remain employable. So I'm fascinated that there's varieties of people of all ages attending the school. And I'm going to ask you in a second, how do you appeal to so many groups of so many different ages and then if you don't mind, I'm going to dig into that government question as well, because yeah. when I listen to the news and watch the economy and see statements from UK and Ireland government, it's very yeah. much about digital capabilities. But let's let's lead the first one. Interesting. Well, how come so many people of different ages are attracted to come to the school to learn digital skills? And do you notice differences between the different age groups as to their ability to be able to consume those skills? Yeah, good, it's a good question. Um, so we've we've had we've had learners from 
when we first piloted this, we had a, we had a learner at 16 years old. He was a school leaver, right? So we've had people as young as that, school leavers. And then as we've moved forward and run other programs, we've had people in their 40s, right? Just looking to career change, had, had various different work um, in various sectors, you know, but as they've evolved as people, um, they want to try something new. They want to try and get into a new career. So there's the wide age range of people that we've we'll worked with. Um, and, and that's important because we don't want to say the school is only for, you know, 16, to 19 year olds or 20 to 24. Like why? There's no reason why anyone can't learn this technology. You know, it's accessible. It's making it accessible to all, right? Uh, regardless of age your background, um, prior learning, right? Everyone's everyone's took a different career path, you know, and sometimes people's circumstances is, you're born into certain circumstances, certain, you know, s social aspects, communities, and sometimes you're not in control of that. And I suppose for the school, one of our biggest things is, and this is what drives my passion, is equality of opportunity, you know, um, to even myself and, you know, when I grew up and, and some of the people that we're helping actually, even from like areas of low deprivation, how will they ever get a chance to have a career in this space, you know, and go and work with this software, you know, it's automation, it's quite exciting. How are they ever going to possibly connect and go on a journey and have a career in this space? And I suppose that's where the school sits right in the middle and connects that. It connects the people, provides the environment, the training, and links it with business, whether it's public sector, private sector, you know, and that's where we we sort of sit in the middle, connecting people and business at the other side. So no, Mark, that just to stick in that for a second, because like you mentioned about areas of maybe high deprivation yeah. or you mentioned the accessibility of what we might now call great careers. I, I sometimes wonder if we didn't have digital technology, would we have retained the, whatever you want to call it, low class, high class structures that we see in some countries? Yeah. And how would we actually get people who 10 and 15 years ago wouldn't have had the opportunities today to earn you know really great incomes compared to their parents yeah. by actually learning these automation technologies you know so there's a real social advantage here from the school and i don't want people to miss that or a real social advantage because technology has democratized roles and careers to some extent. What's your thoughts yeah. on that, or, or am I seeing something that's not there? No, I think you're right. And one of the biggest things for us was when we set off on this journey, I think we had in our head, we were going to do this learning face to face, right? And when COVID hit, we really had to re engineer our, our plans, right? We had to go very quickly to remote working, right? We were all forced to do that. And I suppose as we move forward in 2020, 2021, remote working became pretty normal. It eventually became pretty comfortable, you know, dare I say. And that's one of the ones, that's one of the things looking back now, I'll pull out and say, it's actually really helped us, right? It's really helped open up, you know, accessibility for people, regardless of where you stay. Because all, you know, to to join our course and be part of this, all you needed was a laptop, an internet connection, and you could take part in this, right? And it was never about, could you travel somewhere? Could you come to where we were running the sessions or the groups? So, you know, COVID, working remotely, digital technology, and being able to have these platforms actually does allow people to participate and, and be included. So. You know, I, I think there is something there that's actually worked to your advantage. Worked to your advantage in the school. And I think when we listen to this, Mark, I think it must surely work to the pupil's advantage. Oh, so, for example, so. I've worked for large American organizations sitting in my house here and been able to earn 
money and establish a career and get a lot of skills. Prior to what you might call digital technologies, the internet, I would have worked for a local firm and there's nothing wrong with that, but they're not at the scale or the income capacity that allows me to afford a nice lifestyle for my family. You know, and I'm assuming, again, I'll, I'll pick an area and it's not meant in any detrimental sense, but if you're sitting in East Kilbride or a very small village somewhere outside of Glasgow or a very, very tiny town outside of Belfast, or if you're yeah. in a remote part of Cork or Galway in Ireland where there's not a lot, then your ability to develop a career would be very much limited to the local industries in the area that you're in. In Ireland, for example, it would be a lot of hotel work or tourism work, which only actually happens in certain parts of the year. So to your point, the ability to have a laptop and an internet access and travel and work across the globe, yeah. that must be exciting for the students. Do they understand that that has now been possible because of digital technology or do they just take this as a, as a given or does it again depend <laughs> on experience? Yeah, um, I, I think you're absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. People from the local communities, whatever that is, is I think you're right. They maybe had a mindset of, you know, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to work here, or I work in a radius of, you know, a number of miles. It's you know, reasonable to travel, right? But I think what this does is it opens up, you know, you know, unbelievable opportunity, as you said, like. You work for people in the US, we're the same from, we've had some of our developers work with people in North America, right across Europe, all sitting from their home, <laughs> right? So uh, as a learner, this is really new, right? I, I, you know, I don't think they could have prepared for this. And I suppose part of it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to promote this career and this is the way you can work, right? Um, where is maybe, let's say, a year or two ago at least, I don't think they ever had that mindset that that was even possible. But I think as we're moving forward and we're showing, and you know, we're showing the examples of what we're doing, what we're creating, it is possible. It absolutely is possible. So there's a mind shift there and a, you know, a state of mind of the art of the possible here. Like, can I believe I can have a career in this space? Can I believe I could go and do something that maybe a year ago was just out, maybe out of my reach and in terms of their own belief and what they think they could do. So, yeah, I think we're definitely opening up people's minds to, you know, especially careers, what is possible. And you can actually, you don't have to move out of your local community. You don't have to move to anywhere else in the world to have a career like this. You can actually do it from home. Um, I really like that used to say years ago where I used to use this phrase mark that Ireland's greatest export was his people <laughs> because everybody had to leave to go yeah. and get a job somewhere so what's some of the things that uh, the students are doing now that this belief is starting to form and it must be gorgeous to stay in your community and you know enjoy not only your community life but your career so what are some of the things that your students are now doing as part of the course so tell us a little bit of that journey how do you find yeah. the students do they find you what is it that they're actually learning and what is it that the jobs and the businesses or the government or the education sectors that they're working in yeah. look like and feel like to them <clears throat> okay I'll, um there's probably lots of different lots of different stories let me i'll probably target specifically so we we do work in scotland and we work with skills development in scotland national skills body there we run a program there. We run a program in Ireland with part of with Limerick and Clare Education Training Board. Let me focus on that one for a second. Um, there's, no, there's lots of great stories within there. It's in, in Ireland specifically. It's government policy, you know, to to invest in automation, RPA technology. So, I think what we're what we are trying to do is we're trying to bring students through to meet that demand. So our program is, we work with, um, you know, we work with the Education Training Board and the welfare departments because what we're trying to do in Target is people, you know, as we said earlier, people who need an opportunity, people, you know, predominantly 
are unemployed. And we work with, you know, those people, we advertise our courses, there's various platforms that someone can apply to. So there's, there's a really good setup there, you know, and we, we do things on our social media, there's digital marketing that we put out there to, to recruit people in the first place. And that's the sort of target audience that we're we're looking for. We then have a program and curriculum in place. It's in two parts. First is there's a 12 week course curriculum that trains people in RPA technology. Because one of the biggest things, Kieran, is what we're learning is the education piece in this space is, you know, we're advertising for our jobs and careers and, and to go on this journey of training and into employment. But not a lot of people know what this is, right? Still, even though me and you could sit here today and go, Christ, we've known about this for a long, long time. Actually, when you speak to people, like students, learners, you know, you speak about what do you know about automation, intelligent automation, RPA, you know, it's very little. It would surprise you. It still is very little. When I speak to job coaches, careers advisors, because they're the people that are going to pass this information and this opportunity to their clients that are looking for work, is their knowledge is very limited. Right, so at the start, we've got you know a, a challenge and a piece of work to do about educating people about what is this technology, why are businesses using it, what are the benefits, and how can we get you know students and learners on the journey. So that's the first part of that. So there's a twelve week program in place that we take students through. It gives us a chance to work with them, and it gives a student a chance to to learn, go through the process use the technology, do they like it, learn more about a career as a developer, or even, you know, it's not just a developer, you can go into many different, you know, job roles once you, you get started and you get moving. And after the 12 weeks, because, you know, and I know we've maybe spoke previous about this on a, another couple of calls, after 12 weeks of training, is anyone an expert on anything? No, right? So we're saying, we, the first 12 weeks is to get someone to a starting point, right? Is one, they know about the technology, they're now familiar with it, they've got reasonable competence to use it, right? At a junior sort of level. And after that 12 weeks, we take them on another year long journey. And that's when we engage with client partners, and that's public sector, private sector. In between us, we work with the client, the student, and ourselves to build their experience because. That's what we know is once they get experience using the technology in real live projects and situations, now they're well equipped to go to market because the end goal, what is the end goal for what we're trying to do is, one, get the right skills, training and competence to the learner, you know, and ultimately get them into employment and into jobs in this space, right? That's the ultimate end goal that we're trying to, to do. It's very difficult after a 12-week program just to step into a job as a, a developer. It doesn't work quite as easy as that, you know. Yeah, the technology, you can pick it up, you can learn it. Okay, you can, but it's about competence and about how do you, you know, weave that into business and, you know, and be part of, a, you know, a team and a project team. So it takes a little bit more time. And that's where the Ireland, the model we've got in Ireland, it works perfectly. Right. Well, could we dig into that a little bit, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I suppose, let, let me ask it, uh, an ugly question, or what could be an ugly question. You mentioned, you know, we, we take people who are unemployed at the School of Automation, does, we train them for 12 weeks, you then put them into an employer. Uh, I'm sure there's some big consultancies in Ireland who want to work with the health service and charge a reassuringly large fee for that. And they'll do a good job, great job, uh, depending on the consultancy, as I've discovered in the past. Uh, but tell me this, how are you going to support the public bodies in Ireland? And I see a lot in the health sector talking about automation, whatever else. How will the School of Automation support them, number one? How will you support these graduates who are in with 12 weeks experience or maybe 20 weeks experience? And the ugly question is, are you putting in cheap labor 
to get contracts and just people into jobs or are you actually putting in forgive the phrase a very valuable product that's going to make a meaningful contribution to a public sector that needs a meaningful contribution <clears throat> yeah, so important question. So let me try and answer them. So how can we help? So when we put when we put a student in with a public sector body, we have their technical team wrapped around support, right? So it's not like a student goes in and they're left to their own devices with that client partner. We have a tech, we have their technical trainers behind the scenes. So we've equipped them to be able to go in. And, and get started and we are you know for that full year we we wrap around support and care now not just technical support right because it's people we work with so it's people building bots it's not bots we're putting in people come with all you know i've, I've been doing this a long long time and, and what i always find what stops people reaching their potential it rarely it rarely is is the skill, right? Is learning the skill. It's never really that in my experience. So it's always personal things. How are they coping with things? Things can happen in people's lives. How do you how do you manage that, overcome that? So their personal and professional skills is just equally as important, right? So behind the scenes, the school is offering that student and learner the support personally and professionally to manage and deal with that and all the things that come with that and the technical skills and support so that's the way we work with students when they go into a client partner so <clears throat> the business and client that we work with they've they've got the support of the school behind them right it's not like we you know when the student goes there we don't walk away it's a it's a partnership for the year-long program you know and together one the business should get benefit and value, right? Because that student is building, you know, automation um, at various levels and adding value to the business. But what I would say is, is the student gets paid, you know, a training allowance for being part of that. But we also pay the student a top up, right? Because what we want to make sure is, you know, the student feels valued, right? Because what we know is, after 12 weeks, they can't walk into a full-time job as a developer. It's never really going to work after 12 weeks, right? They need the experience. We know that. So the year-long program is there to get them experience. But as part of that year-long program, that student gets paid a training allowance for being part of the course. And we also pay them a top-up, a weekly top-up for the work they're doing with the client. All right. So the student now feels part of it. The student feels like an employee right? They work full-time hours. They're treated exactly like another member of the team, you know? And, and that's what we're trying to create and instill in the learner, right? They've got to feel like they're at their work and we've got to treat them like they're at their work. You know, we wrap all that care around the student and the business, what does the business get from that? One, they get, what they get hopefully, a pipeline of talent coming into their business, right? Now, at that point, it's part of the traineeship. They're not employed with the business yet. But the business has got the opportunity at the end of that year-long program to employ them if there is a post available, right? So it, the biz can benefit from being part of the year-long and giving that experience to the learner because they can offer employment at the end of that if they've got a post and a vacancy available. If they've not, what we do know, and I've, we've got examples in the past, that learner can then take their experience, their skills, and go to market and actually apply for a job with credibility, right? Because they've now got all this history, they've got all this project experience to speak about, and they can they now go to market. And we've got examples of that happened, you know, last year with some of the some of the learners in the group. So it's a win for the learner. It's a win for the business. If they want a pipeline of talent to grow their automation, to start growing resources, to be able to you know implement what they're doing, is then there's a there's a pipeline of people coming through. Oh, I love that. I love that, and I I, I really like the answer there. If that makes sense, in terms of 
the learners are getting something the business is getting something and even as you say if there's no job at the end of that they've got the skills or the marketable skills to do it how do the students feel and mark do you have any examples of where someone has been through that process and maybe not name names because that may or may not be appropriate but have you got example of someone who's been through unemployment or they're very young they've went on to the 12 weeks they've ended up with an employer they've now got a full-time job how does how do they feel because that must be damned exciting yeah. to come from zero to hero 100 percent, and 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 that's what I, what I say to our team is there's where we get our job satisfaction when we can you know see learners from the very start there is knowing nothing about RPA or this technology, intelligent automation, to now going through the full journey and entering employment, you know, and and having a, a career and a salary as a junior developer, right? It, it, there's no better feeling that we see. Some examples of that, right, without maybe calling names and people out on this is, for example, we had people that were right at the start of a, the program, maybe working in bars, maybe working in construction, retail, having jobs like that and maybe never, you know, never fulfilling maybe their passion or their potential or really where they wanted to see themselves. And they're the type of people who maybe started on your program and, and just going through that journey, as I said, the 12 week program, coming on to the year long traineeship, getting the experience and work experience with clients and now they're working as developers. Um, we've had, you know, we've had a, a young, well, a student, let's call it a student learner with autism come through this program, um, through the journey, the training, the work experience, and now find themselves, you know, they went and done some work experience with a client and then went to market and secured themselves employment. And today, as we sit today, they're working as an RPA developer you know quite a big company in Ireland um and just to see that journey and see what's possible is there's a you know there's another story um Christ we've had we've had various learners you know people returning to work um from maybe career breaks raising families you know taking a bit of time out and then coming back into the sector um as I say we've we had a couple of young people back in our, the course in Glasgow. These are some of the youngest people, um, 16 years old, right? And I suppose 16 years old, you're fearless, aren't you? You're like, you're fearless. But I suppose one of the challenges for us at that point was we, we can do the training. So that's the bit we can execute really well. It's like, how do we convince employers, clients and partners to take someone, at, you know, as they evolve, you know, 17, 18, like, how do we convince that, you know, these people are ready, they could add value to your business? So, you know, and, and we have, we've done it. And, you know, one of them went on and worked for like a big insurance company, you know, in the UK. And the feedback we got was this young guy was a superstar, you know, and, um, and dare I say, they absolutely loved his contribution, the work that he'd done. Um, and probably to see that young person grow right from when he first engaged with us at 16, 17. Now he's, what is it? I think he's 18, 19. It's incredible. And, wow. and, and some of the things we are seeing now, Kieran, which is brilliant, is some of them are now buying their own flat and houses, right? Some of them are going on holiday for the first time. Some of them are passing their driving tests and now buying a car, right? So, you, you know, you talk about what is the impact you're having on people's lives. It's, you know, it's when you see it and you see people starting to grow and thrive and one of the important things is contribute back, you know, into the, whether it's the economy, society, their own community. It's like, that's the impact, you know, and I always tell our team is, Never forget that. Never forget. Sometimes we don't always see it, but I believe it wholeheartedly that the impact we're making on people's lives to go and progress, and you know, and, and the, we talk about the ripple effect that that has for people um, is you can never underestimate that. Wow, 
that is satisfaction coming to work every day when that's, he is over there. He's, and I'm sure it's not easy. Mark, for people who want to find out more about the work that you and the school do, oh, oh, how do they get in touch with you? Is it LinkedIn, websites, all those? What, what is it? Yeah, all those. If you're listening to this call, reach out to Kieran. I'm sure Kieran, you'll quite happily pass. I will pass anyone on. Um, but again, website. Yeah, you know, schoolofautomation.tech website. You know, reach out. There's social media platforms. We're on all the social media platforms. Um, so yeah, you're sort of usual ways to reach out. Um, one, if it's just to learn more about the course. Whether if you're a business or client, how could you tap in and how can you be part of this? Um, if you're a student learner and you want a career change and go on this journey, yeah, there's lots of opportunities um, that we're creating. So, yeah. I love that. I really love that. That has probably been the best story that I've heard about automation and intelligent automation actually making an impact on people's lives. We sometimes forget the tech wasn't around 10, 15, 20 years ago. We forget that when you see all the shiny, happy things you see on social media, that there's real lives and real people involved and unemployment and social deprivation. So when you hear a story of people, and thank you, Mark, if someone hasn't said thank you before, making a real impact on people's lives, and then maybe them who haven't been employed or ran the risk of never being employed based on where they're located, to actually have an impact on their lives and them having an impact, as you mentioned, and their ripple effect on their families and communities. Yeah. What an amazing story. I wish you and the School of Automation every single success because you deserve it. I appreciate it, Kieran. Thank you very much. Thank you.